diffraction of light. The phenomena of bending of light around the corners and encroachment of light within the geometrical shadow of the opaque obstacles is called diffraction. Here, the source is a point source. It will have the light in all direction. It, is, it will be in the form of rays or you can say waves. When the light is traveling from the source through this slit, it will approach to the screen. And we expect that as it is in the form of rays, it will travel in a straight line. But due to the bending of light at the corners of this slit, there will be encroachment of the light in the shadow region. So here in the diagram, you can see that the light has entered in the shadow region, which is called as a diffraction at a slit. Take the another case. Source is in front of the obstacle and behind the obstacle there is a screen. We expect that due to the straight line path of the light, the obstacle will have the shadow on the screen as shown in the figure. But due to the bending of light at the corners of this obstacle, the shadow region has decreased and the encroachment of light in the shadow region has occurred, which is called as a diffraction at an obstacle. So here, X, Y region are the region of diffraction. Now, let's find out the diffraction of a light at a single slit. The first case, at an angle of diffraction, theta is equal to 0. AB is the slit, while here the screen behind the slit is being kept. A plane wave front is incident on the slit. This plane wave front can be obtained when a monochromatic source of light is kept at the focus of convex lens. The rays from the convex lens after the refraction becomes parallel and the plane perpendicular to this rays is a plane wave front. So here we get the plane wave front which further incident on the slit with width d. As Shown in figure, the number of points along the width D act as a secondary source of light waves of same amplitude emitted from this secondary source in all direction. With the convex lens, these waves are focused on the screen at point O kept at distance D. The diffraction pattern is obtained on the screen with varying intensity. The intensity decreases as you go away from the center. Let's consider a point O on the screen which is at halfway distance of the lens such that rays from the slit are parallel to the lens converges at O without phase difference and the waves superpose each other and produces high intensity at point O on the screen. Therefore, the point O is the central bright fringe. Now consider at an angle of diffraction, theta is equal to theta 1. 
if we consider any arbitrary point on the screen, this is the plane wavefront in front of the slit. The lens is being kept and the rays through this slit are making an angle theta and they converges at point P1 on the screen. All the secondary waves from the slit which are parallel making an angle theta 1 with the horizontal travel through the lens and reach point P1. The intensity at point P1 depends on the path difference between the waves. Now, let's draw perpendicular AN on the ray through B. Therefore, BN is the path difference between the rays A and B. Now, to find the first secondary minima, divide the slit into two equal parts. Let d sin theta 1 is equal to lambda. So that the path difference between the rays A and B is lambda. While the path difference between the halfway distance and A is lambda by 2. Now we can say that we will have always one point in upper half such that it will have the corresponding point in lower half such that the rays from these points when reach the screen their path difference will be lambda by 2. Hence, these will produce destructive interference which means the minima at that point and here this minima is the first secondary minima. Here in this diagram if we divide this slit into 12 points then the wavelength from the single wavefront diffracts at an angle theta such that bn is lambda reach point p1 the pairs 0 6 1 7 2 8 3 9 4 10 5 11 6 12 interfere destructively with path difference lambda by 2 and give first secondary minimum which is the dark fringe at an angle of diffraction theta is equal to theta 2 The slit is imagined to be divided into four equal parts. The upper half will have the points in such a way that the rays from them will have the path difference lambda by 2 in the lower half. Hence, the nth sec we will have again the minima at point P2. The wavelets from the secondary wavefront diffract at an angle of theta such that Bn is equal to 2 lambda and reach point P2. Therefore, the pairs in the upper half that is here 0, 3, 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 6 and further 4, 7, 5, 8, 6, 9, 7, 10, 8, 11 and 9, 12 in lower half interfere destructively with path difference lambda by 2 and give second secondary minimum 
which is the dark fringe. Now, at an angle of diffraction, theta 1 dash. Let's consider the slit is divided into three equal parts. And the path difference is 3 lambda by 2. So that two rays from the upper part meet at destructively because the path difference between them is of lambda by 2. While the third part which will not be cancelled by any other ray and it will produce the intensity at point P1 dash on the screen. Hence, that intensity will be lesser than that of the central bright point. And hence, we get as you go away from the central bright point, the bright fringes will have the lesser intensity. So, the wavelengths from the single wavefront diffract at an angle of theta dash such that Bm is 3 lambda by 2 and reach the point P1 dash. The pairs 0, 8, 1, 9, 2, 10, 3, 11, 4, 12 interfere constructively with part difference lambda and 0, 4, 1, 5, 2, 6 and 8, 12 interfere destructively with path difference lambda by 2. However, due to few wavelets interfering constructively, first secondary maxima is formed. Now, let's have a diffraction at various angle altogether. is the first secondary minima second maxima then again minima this is the central maxima with high intensity as you go away the intensity decreases for the secondary maximas So, from this figure, you can see central maxima is the brightest fringe while the diffraction is not visible after a few order of diffraction. Theory The path difference between 0th wavelet and 12th wavelet is Bn. If theta is the angle of diffraction and D is the slip width, Bn is equal to D sine theta. To establish the condition for secondary minima, the slit width is divided into 2, 4, 6 equal parts, that is the even multiples of parts, such that the corresponding wavelets from successive region interfere with path difference of lambda by 2. Or for nth secondary minima, the slit can be divided into two n equal parts. For theta 1, d sine theta 1 is equal to lambda. For theta 2, d sine theta 2 is equal to 2 lambda. And for theta n, d sine theta n is equal to n lambda. Since theta n is very small, we can write d theta n is equal to n lambda and theta n is equal to n lambda by d. To establish the condition of secondary maxima, the slit is divided into 3, 5, 7 equal parts, such that corresponding wavelets from alternate region interfere with path difference of lambda. 
or for nth secondary minima, the slit is divided into 2n plus 1 equal parts. So for theta 1 dash, d sin theta 1 dash is equal to 3, n, 3 lambda by 2. For theta 2 dash, d sin theta 2 is equal to 5 lambda by 2. For theta n dash, d sin theta n is equal to 2n plus 1 lambda by 2. Since theta n dash is very small, d theta n is equal to 2n plus 1 lambda by 2. Or we can write theta n dash is equal to 2n plus 1 lambda upon 2d, which is the condition for secondary maxima. Now, distance of the maxima and minima from the central bright point. Tan theta 1 is equal to y1 upon d, which we can get from the expression. Or theta 1 is equal to y1 upon d since theta 1 is very small. Hence, d sine theta 1 is equal to lambda or we can write theta 1 is equal to lambda by d. So, from both this expression, we can get d theta 1 and y1. Now, let y and d is the distance of nth dark point from the central bright point and y and b is the distance of nth bright point from the central bright point. Therefore, theta and d, that is the diffracting angle for obtaining the dark fringe is equal to y and d upon d and d sin theta and d is equal to n lambda or we can write theta and d is equal to n lambda upon d. Therefore, y and d, that is the distance of nth dark point from the center is n d lambda upon d. Let d lambda by d is equal to w. So, we can have y and d is n times w. Similarly, for the distance of nth bright point, we know the diffracting angle for the bright point theta and d is equal to y and d upon d, while d sine theta and d is equal to n plus half lambda or theta and d is equal to n plus half lambda by d if theta is very small. Therefore, the distance of the nth bright point from the central bright point is n plus half d lambda by d. Again, d lambda by d can be written as w, while w in interference is the fringe width, while here the w is d lambda by d. It is the distance between consecutive bright fringes or consecutive dark fringes except the central bright point. So, the distance of minima and maxima here we have found out. Now, width of the central maxima. The, to find the width of the central maxima, we need to find out how much the central maxima is spread on the screen. Let on the upper half it is to a distance y1 and the same distance it will have to the lower half. Tan theta 1 that is opposite divided by adjacent side will give y1 upon d. So theta 1 is y1 upon d. Hence, d sine theta 1 is equal to lambda and theta 1 is equal to lambda by d. So, from that we can write y1 is equal to d lambda by d 
since the central maxima is spread on either side of O, the width is WC is equal to 2D lambda by D. That is twice the W. So, the central maxima is 2 times D lambda by D where capital D is the distance between slit and screen while small d is the slit width.